In this demonstration, I want to show you how you can make a title for the page that we've been working on. Okay, so let's jump back to Komodo Edit, where we were working before. And inside the body, I want to go ahead and let's just make something that is um, an H1 here. Let's go ahead and do our H1 tag. And I'm going to call it Jet Setter, just like uh, I did in my other example. And we're going to end the H1 tag. And I'm going to just go ahead and save that as is. And let's just look at it, hit refresh, and then it shows me the Jet Setter title right here. Okay. Now, if I want to be able to do something with that, I need to go ahead and look at, let's look at what we've got here. And you can see that I created this title here that allows the rest of the content to be pushed down. Um, and so one of the easy ways of doing that is we can create a header and put the H1 inside of the header. And um, we can also, instead of just having text here, we can use a picture file and that has alt text. So let's go back to Komodo and let's rethink rethink this and let's go back in here and let's say that we're going to make a header and let's end the header like that and we're going to have our H1 inside the header. Now that's not going to effectively change the positioning of anything but what it's going to do is just allow us to have some uh, architecture, some structure, semantic structure that makes sense. Now where it says Jet Setter, um, what I'd like to do is replace that actual text with a picture, but instead of just putting an IMG tag right on top of it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an image tag inside that's placed right inside of the HTML, so we're going to say image src for source, okay, and have it equal a value and then we're going to have alt text that equals a value and the word jet setter is going to be right next to it so the IMG tag is going to be inside of the H1 so let's go ahead and define what that image source is going to be well right now we don't have an image for that title but let's say that we're going to name it something let's say that we're going to name it uh, jet setter dot png okay or we can actually, let's call it title.png, okay? That makes more sense. But it's going to have to be in the images folder, so we're going to put it images slash title.png, okay? And the alt is going to be the word jet setter because that is the, the actual text of the picture. So we're going to make the alternate text called jet setter. All right, now let's jump over to Photoshop and I'm going to show you how we can go about making this. This was our last file, so I'm going to go ahead and I guess I'll save where we were, and I'm going to close this out. And I'm going to make a new file. All right, so let's go ahead and do File, New. And then for these settings, what we're going to do is change some of these values here. Let's go ahead and start off by saying that the width is going to be about 2,000 pixels wide. Now, the actual image itself was over 2,800 pixels wide, if you remember, but really we're never going to need for the file to be quite that large because by the time it expands out that far, it's really not going to be important that the picture takes up that much space. Um, now, the height, I'm going to go ahead and leave the height at 500 because if you remember, let's take a quick peek back here. Let's look at the original Jet Setter. Um, if you remember, we have the height of these things being about 500. Um, but what's happening is that this is getting scaled. You can see that Jet Setter isn't exactly 2,000 pixels because th from, from point A to point B, from left to right, that's not 2,000 pixels right now for this viewport. What's happening is that I'm scaling it with the CSS. So let's just go ahead and say that proportionally we like 2000 by 500 because of the proportions that that represents and my most important uh, criteria right now is how wide the picture would be at 100 percent and I think 2000 is a reasonable size and if it's scaled up beyond that uh, it won't be scaled up beyond that by very much and so it would be uh, we wouldn't have a, a, a much of a quality loss okay so let's use these proportions um, so that it's basically one to four, so this would be one to four, okay? And then the other thing that's important is that we have a transparent background, 
and that's very important at the resolution of 72 ppi. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll just call this, give it a working title, and we'll call it title. Okay, and we still have our grid marks, which we can keep if we want them. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and collapse the adjustments layer and the color layer so that I can just look at my layers for right now. And what I want to do is I want to go ahead and select my text tool, which is right here on the left in the tool panel. And I'm going to also go ahead and select a font. Now, I've already got the font selected that I decided I wanted to use. I have Century Gothic on my computer. You might not have that, so you would need to select some other type of font that you like. Um, something else that you can do is um, you can also use Google Fonts and you can download the font and you can put it into your font folder. Um, to do that, let me show you really quickly, you can go to, let's open a new tab first of all. This is the address that you want to go to is google.com slash fonts. Okay, so let's go ahead and go there. And at Google Fonts, you can filter what type of font you would like. So like, for instance, let's say that you know that you want a sans serif. Sans serif is anything without literally the serif or the, like the little curl on the end. So you could uh, click on where it says all categories and you could say, I don't want a serif. A serif example, for instance, would be like Times New Roman versus say, like Arial which is a sans serif, okay? So let's say we want a sans serif. You can pick whatever you want though. I don't want handwriting. Um, and then maybe display is something that might be a little bit decorative, but it's literally for display. Um, and I could say, okay. And then maybe for the thickness, I want it to be somewhat thin, right? So it gives you some choices based on those things. And what you can do is if you find something that you like, uh, then you can go ahead and add it to your collection. So let's say, for instance, that we like, let's pick one. Let's say that we like Open Sans. Okay, we say Add to Collection. And then to actually use it on your computer, what you need to do is go to this download arrow. If you hover it, it'll actually say download. You click on download, and it gives you this thing that tells you, you know, okay, well, you can you don't have to actually download it to use it on the web. Well, what we're going to do is we're actually going to be using it in Photoshop. So you would actually need it on your computer if you're going to use anything from Google Fonts to use on your computer. So you would download that in a zip file. On a Mac, you would just double click the zip folder and uh, and then you could add it using like font book or something. Uh, but if you're on Windows, you can uh, right click and choose to extract the zipped folder and then you would drag it to your system font folder. Um, or if you have some other kind of font management tool you could use that, but I'm not going to go into that here. After you download this you can go ahead and close it. And uh, by the way it also does say if you click on this download one more time, it says if you want to download all the font families then you could go to the Google Code project to do that. So if you always want to have the Google fonts available on your computer so that you can work with them then you can do the whole thing. Um, and just while I'm at it, while we're already at the Google fonts, I'm going to go ahead and show you how you can use them on a web page. So whenever this thing right here is open where it says collection one font family, you can go over here to the use button and it tells you the one that you've got selected right now is Open Sans and it gives you the information about some of the common ones that it's going to use. It gives you page load time information so you're still within a good range in the green zone. Um, the more of these you click to add, the more time it's going to take to load. So if I want to add bold 700, I may want to use that later. So I'm going to go ahead and give myself that option. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and scroll down. <clears throat> and what it's going to do is right here, it says add this code to your website. So this is where you would put uh, this information inside of your HTML. So I'm going to copy this. And let's go back into Komodo. Just this is we're just doing this while we're at it. And where you're going to place this is right before your CSS. And I'll explain that in just a moment. You would copy that and you'd paste it right before you actually make a reference to your CSS. And the reason is because you're going to have to load these Google fonts before you can actually call them out later in your CSS file. Okay. And then let's go back to the Google font page. And let's scroll down. And then it tells you to how to integrate it into your CSS. So I'm going to highlight where it says font family 
and then it says Open Sans or Sans Serif. Okay, we're going to copy that, and then we're going to go back to Komodo again, and this time we put this in our style sheet, and I'm going to put it inside of my body rule. I'm going to put it at the bottom, and I'll paste that where it says Font Family Open Sans Sans Serif, and now this isn't going to help me make, by doing this, it's not going to help me make the actual title, but what it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and change the font for the rest of my page. So if you want to use the same font for your title as you're going to use for the rest of your page, you can go ahead and paste it into your body and then download it separately like I showed you before and then put it in your font folder and then you can actually use that font from Photoshop. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and save this change since I did it. And uh, I don't need this Google font page anymore, but whatever, I'll just leave it there for right now. And if I were to go back just right now and refresh my page, you can see that it is uh, using a different font now. It's not that Times looking uh, font. And you see it's got a broken image link. And the reason it has a broken image link is because if you look at our HTML, I have an image whose title doesn't, yet, uh, excuse me, whose um, file doesn't actually exist yet. We haven't created that. Okay, so what I want to do now is go back to Photoshop and I'm going to create my text. So let's go to the text tool again. And like I said, I'm still going to use Century Gothic. Uh, I'm not going to use the Open Sans. I could also choose to use Bold uh, if I wanted it to be bold, which I'll go ahead and do. And I'm going to make mine at 400 points. And the other thing before I go any further is I want to, where I have this color right here of white, I want to change that. I'm going to double click it and it'll open up this color picker for me. And I already happen to know kind of what the color is that I want to use. It's this one. It's this kind of orange color. Again, if you're doing something different, you can pick whatever color you want and explore and that's the color that it's going to start typing in. And lastly, the other thing that I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and open up my character panel, which I can double click because I have it here, but if you don't, you can go up to Window and choose Character. And you see it gives a lot of uh, basic typography design tool options, so like you can adjust the letting here, um, and, or the tracking here, and you'll notice that the last setting that I had used at some point was on where it says the tracking, which is this uh, letter, sp it's like letter spacing. Um, it was set to 50, normally it's set to zero, okay? And also notice that my thing, the last time I used it, was set to faux bold. There's this button right here, and remember, I told you before that if you use something, it's going to remember the last setting that you had, and I don't want, I don't know that I actually want bold. I mean, let's. Let's just see what happens with bold, and we'll see if we want to use the real bold or we want to use the faux bold, okay? So, while this thing is selected, I'm going to go ahead and use my type tool, and I'm going to click here and start typing the word jet setter, okay? And I can move this down a little bit, and I'm going to actually move this character panel off to the side because I want to be able to see what I'm doing a little bit better. And it looks like, I, I don't like the tracking, or the in this case the letter spacing, um, so I want to change this back to 50, and see how that looks, and it gives it a little bit more space in between the letters, which I think is kind of nice, and I'm going to move it over so that it's a little bit more centered, and you can use those guidelines to give you an idea of where, kind of where center is going to be, somewhere in there. And the other thing too, uh, is that you can look at this and decide, all right, well, if this is actually the real bold, here, let's go back to the text tool, you can select this again, and you can turn it back to the regular size, which is kind of nice because it's very light and airy, but maybe if you want it to be a little bit heavier on the screen, what you could do is come down here and see what happens if you use the faux bold, and that does something really different. Um, so you can make those decisions. Like it looks like the letter form is a little bit rounder than whenever it was using regular bold. Let's see if it looks that much different. Let's try it again. And see where the T is nice and square on the ends. If you want it to be nice and square like that, then you might want to use a regular bold. 